Well, good evening, and welcome to Stab the Dragon. This is going to be our whiskey review number nine for Veterans Day, formerly known as Armistice Day. Armistice Day represents the day that the Allied forces, primarily France, England, Italy, and the United States, forced the Germans and their allies to cease military operations during World War I, known as the Great War. And then after World War II, um, it became known as World War I because now there was a second one, right? So prior to World War II, it was the Great War. This war had gone on from July of 1914 to November 1918. The armistice was signed at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. World War I is just not taught much these days. Much of it is misunderstood. The cost in blood that the principal nations paid was horrific. America did not enter the war until April 6th of 1917 after the Germans had started unrestricted submarine warfare and sank some American ships. And also, a lot of people don't know this, the Germans had attempted to get Mexico into the war on their side uh, by attacking America along the southern border in order to regain the southwestern states along that border. America, and in fact, during that time, uh, America did send troops into Mexico in 1916. You've got the, uh, the Pershing expedition to uh, capture Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa, in, in our history books, is largely referred to as a bandit, but that is not entirely the case. Pancho Villa was a colonel in one of the various branches of the Mexican military because the the state was going the state of Mexico was going through a revolution and so there are various groups that were claiming the title of, of the, being the real uh, Mexican government and Pancho Villa was a uh, colonel in one of those armies. It was a military operation against America that Pancho Villa led including uh, machine guns and artillery, and they attacked a, uh, uh, an American military base there in New Mexico. So President Wilson sent uh, General Pershing into Mexico and uh, to deal with the problem. So the Germans were, were fomenting that. And so America entered World War I under those kind of uh, conditions. So America was only in the war for about a year and a half, uh, yet had over 116,000 dead at a time when our country had one-third the population we have today. Uh, during the course of the war, over 8 million soldiers of all the various participants died. So today we are doing a whiskey review of this whiskey, Lead Slingers Rye. Lead Slingers Rye. And I've trying to get a side view there of that about bottle so you can see the come and take it sign in, in, in the back. So I'm choosing Lead Slingers Rye because this is a company um, that has a connection to the military. Its uh, founder, Matt Best, is a United States Army uh, veteran. He was in the Ranger Battalion, and then he did some uh, contractor work with the CIA after he got out of the Rangers. So he's been involved. There was other. He had other partners, and they were all veterans. So there's a group of like I don't know five or six uh, different veterans uh, that combined together to to start that whiskey company. And the whiskey company is is being produced by Scissor Tail. Uh, distilleries in more Oklahoma. So there's the Oklahoma connection as well. This is Lead Slinger's Fighting Spirit Rye Whiskey. And uh, uh, Matt Best is also the founder of Article 15 Clothing. And most people are going to know him from Black Rifle uh, Coffee. Because he, he does, you know, he started that company as well. So he's, really, he's got you know three companies, and he does a lot of other stuff besides. He, he's an amazing uh, individual. But the uh, Scissor Tail uh, Distillery started in 2013, and uh, they uh, 
team together then with the Lead Singers guys to produce uh, their whiskey, but uh, Scissor Tail also pr produces their own whiskeys as, as well. Scissor Tail uh, produces uh, four Lead Slingers, uh, a single malt, this rye, a bourbon, a rum, and a cinnamon whiskey fittingly called Napalm. I came across this line of whiskey in a YouTube review by Smoking Jacket Whiskey Review, Sergeant Martinez, an 82nd Airborne vet. He reviewed the bourbon, but this alerted me to start looking for this line of spirits. And then I saw this rye uh, reviewed by Rex and Daniel on the Whiskey Vault channel. So then I said, okay, I've got to, I've got to get this because they gave a very positive review of the rye. And so I did find it at, at Specs. I tend to lean towards rye whiskeys a bit more anyway. And, and so I definitely searched this out and found it here in Fort Worth. So uh, this is uh, for the history of this whiskey. You know, I, I give in my, in my rating scheme up to five points for a history of a whiskey. And, uh, oh, I forgot to mention that Garrett Janko is the owner, operator of Scissor Tail Distillery. Uh, Matt Best owns uh, Article 15 and, and Litzlingers and uh, Black Rifle Coffee, but Garrett Janko actually owns and operates the distillery there in Moore, Oklahoma. And I, I went to school at OU, and so that's Norman's right next to Moore. So, you know, this is kind of my old stomping grounds. Uh, but I give this whiskey a four out of five points for history because you can really find a lot of history about Matt Best. Uh, he's, he's all over the place. Marketing, packaging, the bottle, up to five points. Other than the two YouTube whiskey channels I've already mentioned, I've not seen any advertisements for this whiskey brand. I've, I've seen this whiskey in all four of the liquor stores uh, that I frequent. Well, I, I, I see uh, at Goody Goodies, I, I don't see the Lead Slingers rye. I see the Lead Slingers, uh, Lead Slingers bourbon. Uh, but it is readily available uh, here, here in Fort Worth. This bottle is kind of unique. Uh, it's rectangular, clear glass, rubber stopper, simple cap. But the label is very cool, uh, at least to this old army vet here. That's an iconic photo of a Marine from the Pacific during World War II. And I have seen this photo before somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. But it, it's kind of a famous photograph from uh, that time period. The Marines crouched there on one knee with his M1 uh, Garand rifle, jutting forward, bayonet fixed. Uh, in the small, or what it says is Lead Slingers and then Fighting Spirit Rye Whiskey. 45% uh, alcohol by volume. The very cool feature of the bottle I tried to show it to you was the, when you look through the front to the back of the inside, you can see Come and Take It, uh, the Come and Take It flag with the cannon from the Battle of Gonzales, Texas in 1835. The back of the bottle has the typical slogan earring that most whiskeys have. Uh, as spirits connoisseurs ourselves, we wanted to bring a top shelf rye whiskey to market for your enjoyment. After careful consideration and passionate distillation process, Lead Slinger Spirits is extremely proud to present Fighting Spirit Rye. Much like the iconic Marine on the front of our bottle, we feel this will become a cornerstone in your liquor catalog for years to come. Be a leader in all things, especially a taste for quality. Scissor Tail Distillery, Moore, Oklahoma. And then there's some kind of embossing around the base of the bottle. The website for Lead Singer's Whiskey could use some work, I think. Uh, website uh, does not have a picture, nor does it mention the Minuteman Single Malt Whiskey that I find in stores here. Nor does the website really give us uh, as much information as I would like. Uh, it is a bit vague in, in some places, but really the, the bottle appeals to me greatly. And so for marketing and appearance, uh, despite an incomplete website, I'm going to say four out of five points. 
composition, 0 to 15 points. One review I read stated that the smash bill was 100% rye. I could not find that confirmed anywhere, but I can certainly agree that it tastes like other 100% rye whiskeys that I've had. This is about as rye as it gets. Uh, but other than that one review, I really have no idea. I don't know where that information came from. Certainly not the Lead Slingers website. I have no clue other than how it tastes. Uh, they did ha I did see a mash bill for the bourbon somewhere along the line, but uh, not for the rye. The bourbon was stated that it was aged late, less than a year. The rye does not taste that young. I mean, th this tastes like a fully mature rye. So I, I just don't know how long it's been in the barrel. Bottle on the website lists this as 45% ABV, and it's a 750 milliliter bottle. So with the limited amount of information I can find, I'll, I'll give this uh, 10 out of 15 for composition. Physical appearance, the color of the whiskey, up to five points. This is a fairly light amber. Uh, uh, it's darker than some Scotch whiskeys that I've known, uh, but it's it's medium. It's got decent legs that, I, that I've seen here in my Glencairn, and so I'm going to say three out of five points for physical appearance. The nose or the aroma of this whiskey zero to ten. Now, if you've watched any of my other reviews, I clearly state all the time that I've got a terrible nose. I usually cannot smell any whiskeys, uh, particularly bourbons are, are, are bad about having no smell for me. Now scotch, there's, there's several scotches that I do have an easier time with. Irish whiskeys have no smell for me at all, but this rye, oh yeah, the rye spice is strong with this one. It smells delicious on the nose. It's floral, you get the rye spice, the, the little hint of licorice, Really, for this whiskey, a 90 proof rye, there's a strong nose here. If I can smell it, it's pretty strong. But guess what? There is zero alcohol alcohol burn. I, I, I'm not getting any uh, burst of alcohol there at all. So this uh, will be a rare 9 out of 10 points for uh, the nose. Tasting notes, 0 to 25. The taste is like the nose. Solid rye from start to finish. This really is a beautiful solid rye offering. You've got the floral, you've got the rye, you've got the licorice notes that rye whiskeys are famous for. It is mildly sweet, just a hint of the peppery taste at the end. You know, some ryes are very spicy uh, from start to finish. This one is gentle and very smooth from start to finish. And I, I really do tend to like the peppery, spicy uh, rye, like uh, oh, 1776 rye is real, real spicy. But this one wins me over with its grace. I mean, this this is just easy sipping, smooth. If you like the the rye uh, flavor, then this this is really 100% there. So I'm going to say 22 out of 25 on the taste. Mouthfeel, well, it's a little bit buttery. I'm going to say that it's real oily, but certainly it's not thin. Uh, this is a 90 proof, and uh, it's, it's smooth. But after about three sips or so, the mouth does start to tingle. And so that rye spice, the peppery thing, starts to build up. And so that's very pleasant. Uh, that, that's a very nice way to do it. It doesn't erupt in your mouth with that uh, spicy tingle, but it's a slow build. There's no chest burn, really. Uh, it doesn't really go up in my sinuses unless I swallow it just right. And I, I'm one, I like to burn. Okay, I, I like whiskeys that, that burn up in my sinuses or the, the Kentucky hug. I, I like that. This tends not to have much of a, of a burn. 
okay? It is exceptionally smooth. And normally, I don't like smooth whiskey. Well, it's not that I don't like them. It's just I prefer the spicy. But this one, because of the quality of the flavor, really wins, wins me over. So this is just an excellent, easy sipper. 12 out of 15 for the mouthfeel. Price, value, availability, uh, up to 10 points. Total Wine has it for $31.99. Specs for $30.31. Goody Goody uh, had other lead slinger products, but not the rye. I purchased this rye at Specs sometime last year, 2020, and have consumed half the bottle. This whiskey is well worth the price and is as good as some that are priced higher. This is a craft whiskey out of Oklahoma, and, uh, you know, it, it's the only Oklahoma whiskey in my collection of probably close to 100 whiskeys. So this was a must purchase for me uh, for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, a, the, uh, the Army veteran aspect of it, the, the background to this whiskey, uh, you know, the fact that I heard about it from another Army veteran initially. So th there's a lot of things that go into the value of this whiskey for myself. Uh, so definitely this will be a favorite uh, that I would replace when this bottle's empty. So I'm going to say uh, for value and availability, 8 out of 10. The only reason it's uh, not a 9 is because Goody Goody did not uh, carry this rye, but specs and total wine do. Now the next uh, question that I ask about whiskeys is, is this a neat, a, a, is this good neat or is it got to be a mixer? Now I don't drink uh, mixed drinks. I, I don't do cocktails. I, I drink my whiskeys neat 98% of the time. Uh, to save on calories, but also I like to experience the, just the full flavor of the whiskey without diluting it. Uh, the few times that I've put ice in a whiskey, it was just ruined it. There, there's only a, a couple of little simple homemade cocktails that I've done with, with scotch that has worked out for me. But uh, this rye is so remarkably delicious, I simply cannot fathom mixing it. Now, on the other hand, it is so heavy on the rye spice that I know a lot of folks would probably love to put this in an old-fashioned and power to you. <clears throat> but the point here is that this whiskey does not need to hide anything. It is a standalone, delicious, uh, neat drink. So five out of five points. Final category is bonus points. Although I've lived in Texas for over 35 years and call it home, I grew up in Oklahoma. I'm a graduate of OU and you know, like I said earlier, Norman's right next to Moore, Oklahoma. So, of course, when I found this whiskey was distilled in Oklahoma, I just had to have it. Then it turned out to be so delicious as a rye that, of course, you know, I'm, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this. And with the military veteran connection, this was, you know, just I, I couldn't lose with, with this whiskey. <coughs> So five out of five bonus points. This gives this whiskey a total of 82 points. Letter grade B plus A minus. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a, a very solid uh, whiskey, very, very good. I recommend if you like rye whiskeys, this would be a must purchase. Just the rye flavor from start to finish here is a win-win. If you're interested in Oklahoma whiskeys or veteran-owned whiskeys, this is a must-purchase. When this bottle's gone, I will have to replace it ASAP. And as bottles go, I may keep the cool, uh, empty bottle when I'm when I'm finished. Well, that about does it for this episode of Stab the Dragon and uh, whiskey review number nine with Lead Slinger's Fighting Spirit Rye Whiskey. So have a good evening, and we'll sign out now and uh, come back next week hopefully for more.